Hello everyone, this is Ian Ormus with Tech Defense, and today on Tech Tip episode 24, we're going to take a look at Moloch, an open source, large scale IP4 packet capturing indexing database. All right, so before uh, jumping into Moloch today, I just wanted to get some uh, niceties out of the way. I wanted to give everybody a big thanks on uh, Reddit and YouTube and Twitter who have been giving Automator a lot of love. Uh, lately, it's, it's been doing really well. We got a lot of downloads and a lot of feature requests now. Um, so, yeah, I appreciate you guys taking a look at it and getting the word out there that you know, that Automator is out there and, and it can really help out with analysis. And uh, in addition to some of the stuff I've been talking about uh, with Automator already, and you know, one thing I want to let you guys know about is uh, I do plan on uh, implementing a new feature to. Uh, not only you know look at IPs and URLs, but to also be able to put a hash or a list of hashes in here, and then uh, that'll pull more um, you know open source web scraping data on those hashes, you know just like it does for IPs and, and URLs. So I uh, look forward to that soon. But um, let's get out of that and get into what we're going to be talking about today, and that is Moloch. So, uh, Moloch, probably best to start off here. So, uh, you know, I told you a few weeks ago that you know, there's a lot of awesome stuff released at ShmooCon or talked about at ShmooCon that I really wanted to uh, you know, showcase for you guys. And, uh, you know, we went through Mastiff already, and there's a few others I want to get to, but the next one on the list. Um, is Moloch, and uh, what it is is um, think of it as you know your NetWitness, your NetScout, your Cascade products. Think of that, um, but open source. So this is going to archive. Um, well, it's going to give you a method to index, search, browse, you know, pcaps uh, or any captures you you have sent its way, um, and it does it in a, in a really nice. Uh, looking feel and a, a functional feel as well. So there's some things that I would definitely like changed uh, about it, and I'm sure they're they're working on it really hard to to get it uh, doing what they want as well. But uh, as it is right now, it, it is awesome. The creators, um, as far as I know them, anyways, are the two speakers from uh, Shmukan who talked about this, Andy Wick and uh, Mr. Miller here. I'm sure you guys recognize this name. Uh, if you're on the emerging threats mailing list, uh, as he's a huge contributor there. Um, but these guys are part of AOL's uh, CERT team and uh, have been developing Moloch uh, to help them you know, out with what they're doing. So, uh, you know, it, it is an awesome tool. They're keeping it free, which really helps out the, the community. And uh, it, it's it's functional. It, it's not it, it, it's not a poorly polished product. It actually looks pretty good, which you know I'll show you. It, 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 here's what we have, but we'll we'll get into that in a second. Uh, I wanted to give a, a big thank you out to the uh, Securebit guys because uh, you know without them, I actually probably wouldn't have been doing this episode today. As uh, Moloch is is a little rough to install, and I didn't have a whole lot of traffic to throw its way. Um, regardless. So, you know, big thanks to Securebit guys, and of course, uh, particularly uh, Mike Bailey, who has uh, has built this particular instance out and uh, let me connect to it. So, thanks, guys. Well, let's get right into it. So, if you want to download uh, Moloch and get it installed, um, you can do so here at the GitHub page, and uh, they have a couple easy button configs that weren't so easy button, at least not for me. Uh, and, and talking to and the secure bit guys, you know, they, they had a little rough time as well, but they were able to work their way through it. So I'm sure this will get easier as more people use it and they standardize you know, how that's being built out and stuff. But uh, let's get right into you know, the actual the product itself. So right now we're in the stats sec section. I'm actually probably going to take you right to the left and uh, hit the meat of it at the end, the really good data at the end. But stats is kind of like what it, you know, what, what you think it would be. So I can see packets a second, bytes, bits, drop sec, sex, <clears throat> dropped uh, per sec, active sessions, free space, 
over the course of time. Uh, right now, I don't have it capturing. So this is just you know, data captured up till about 9 a.m. this morning. Uh, but if I wanted to see a little more data on there, uh, I could just plus this over here, expand that out, and now I can see more data about what's going on. As you can see, as I'm scrolling across, it gives me the particular data for the selection I have, which is really nice. But this is you know, just keep track of what's going on, how much data is pumping through it. I'm not doing any analysis here, but it gives us good data to work with. Um, of course, you can create users, and see I have one for myself here, and uh, admin being the default when you uh, use the script to, to create this. As you see, we can do our normal user stuff, but then we can also say, hey, uh, they're an admin, they're web-enabled. We can allow them to view email stuff. We can allow them to see web auth headers if we don't want that to happen. You know, we can we can seclude certain people from being able to see certain types of data, which is nice. And I'm sure there'll be more roles uh, added as this goes along. Files, if you just want to uh, pull one of these PCAPs um, to, to play with uh, in Wireshark or, or whatever your tool of choice is. So this is just a big archive of all of the um, that the data is captured so far. So connections is where we start getting into some of the cool stuff that, that this guy can do. And, uh, and since I don't have any data over the last hour, let's just do the last 24 hours and search. So you can see we kind of got this almost um, Maltigo-like feel of things where, all right, these are kind of connected, these are kind of connected. Um, we can start pulling out you know, relationships of IPs you know, based on you know, this transform-like environment. And you'll see over here, um, you know, I, I clicked on one of these guys, which brings up um, a field where I can now start adding to my filter up here. So, hey, I only want to see this IP in this port now, or I just want to see this IP and everything that he's been doing. And I can search specifically for that, and it's going to show me all the relationships with just that uh, specific IP over the last 24 hours. Um, but beyond that, you can do stuff even like, uh, say, country. And this has a very Wireshark-like feel if you're used to that expression model. So equal equals. Um, we'll go with the, the flavor of the week, I guess, uh, and induce China here. And as you see, I can now see everything that's associated with IPs geolocated in China and, and see their relationships with everything else. Um, so yeah, really, really nifty way to, to view the data um, and, uh, and a good way to filter the data as well. Uh, so this is all really nice, but the data that I really uh, get the most out of is where we go in the Sessions tab. So in the Sessions tab, um, so we're looking at the same thing, so it carried my filter over from the Connections tab. So it's looking at 24 hours and country China um, and pulling out all the uh, packets from there and, and highlighting them out for me. Um, so as you see, you know, here it's just giving me kind of uh, at a high level, it's giving me NetFlow data, right? So I'm getting like layer four information here. I'm going to get the timestamp. I'm going to get the NAT table. So I get my source port, my destination port, source IP, destination IP. We'll see how much traffic and uh, was spent um, between the two IPs. But if I want to get into you know the the meat of it, the layer seven data, I can span this out and then see you know what exactly was sent, um, and, and that's in this case uh, what you see. But you can see it's also tagging things, which um, you know these are all also things that we can filter. So now I can filter on. Country China and get request. That's all I want to see. So let's go back up here and search. And now we can see, all right, this is everything in the last 24 hours that we've had traffic involving the geo IP or geolocation China and uh, a tag of an HTTP get. So great. Now let's see one of these. Let's open up uh, this. 
And I, I can tell you just by looking at this, and uh, this is Maltreve running and going out and downloading malware for um, you know, analysis purposes in this lab. But let's open up this guy, and now we can see you know, what's going on here. And not only that, all right, so now I have user agent. Well, let's see everything where the user agent is, and you can see how it's building out this query even further every time I'm, I'm clicking on something. So you can see the power of this where I can start saying things like, um, you know, country is China, port is 53, um, traffic is this. And I can start really um, building out some very specific things that I want to look for. Um, where an HTTP status code of 200 was received. Um, yeah, we can, we can right, see status code 200 here. Uh, so we can start getting very specific on what we want to you know, pull back. And then once I have all this, right, so let's search again here. So now we've, we've got this limited down to just the things that have a user agent of Python URL lib um, that are a git, an HTTP git, and involve the country China. But I don't really like viewing it in here. I mean, this is cool that I can open this up and then I can, um, you know, view it in different formats if I wanted to. That's fine and dandy. But I want my Wireshark, damn it, right? Or or whatever it happens to be for you if it's not Wireshark. So I can then just go ahead and click export. And you can see down here, it's going to give it to me in a PCAP. The specific things that I've specified is going to give me in a PCAP. which I can then you know, do what I would normally do. So show me HTTP, um, show me IP.ADDR, whatever I'm looking for. If this was DNS, I would say, hey, show me some DNS stuff in here. Being, you can start doing that. And then um, I want to follow this TCP stream to see the data. You know, And that's pretty much what, um, when we go back to Moloch, here, when I'm opening this up, that's pretty much what you're seeing here, is uh, you know, pulling out the stream itself. So, yeah. So, as you can see, this, this can get very powerful when you have the ability to do this over um, large amounts of data. So one thing I haven't shown you is, let's go ahead and so you do have, uh, so right now I'm filtering for all traffic ever, and uh, by default it just does it whichever one happened first, where um, me personally I would I would think you'd want that, right? I would want it uh, so that the thing that happened last was sorted first. Um, but as you see, very quick, very responsive to get all this data out of here. Even I mean, there's a decent amount of data in here, so uh, it, it's cool that it, it's still so responsive. But um, you know, say, let's go over the 24 hours. And say there's a uh, there's a spike here, right? Now this spike is a wording you know, to me for whatever reason, and I, I want to focus in on just this time. Well, now I can drag this guy out, and it's going to focus in right there. Now, okay, now I, I, I see this is where the actual spike is. Let's focus in on here. And now I can see exactly what's going on at this particular time. Um, with whatever filter I have applied up here. And again, I can export. Um, if we want to export just one of these guys, right? So uh, this guy right here, I want I want that guy. As you can see, we have the ability to download a PCAP of just this particular uh, session. So I can go, go ahead and download that. Um, and of course, I still have all this other stuff that I can query on, AS numbers, um, and hosts uh, as well. Um, yeah, so lots of great data in there. Um, and the only other thing I haven't really showed you on here is uh, the map. So I can select a country here. So we want to see stuff involving Australia. I click Australia, and it's going to throw the country code in there for you. Um, so, you yeah. know. It, it, it's just very uh, intuitive, very easy to use, which is awesome to see. 
and you know if you don't like that it's showing it by sessions you can choose packets or amount of data um, you know you have that option to you no don't translate um, so that's that is Moloch in a nutshell what it can do for you and, and the power of it um, I'm sure you're looking at this and, and, and feeling that it, it could be very useful in your environments some things that I think would make this even better is uh, you know the ability to create groups based on IPs or um, services uh, or really anything that we wanted to uh, you know. but basically say say we know our DNS servers are uh, 204.69 um, or that's one of our DNS servers that's our only DNS server well if I wanted to or, or say there's more 68, 67, 65 as well be able to create a group called you know, DNS servers and then start doing filters where um, you know, country not equal to US and uh, port dot destination I didn't do my my ands but you get the point and port dot destination uh, equal equal to 53 and group not equal to DNS server you know, something like that right to be able to start saying all right logically grouping your traffic and then uh, you know, making filters around that so I know these are my DNS servers I don't care if they do DNS to anywhere that's what I expect them to do but if I see somebody else attempting to uh, you know, UDP 53 their way out then that's something I do want to know about um, so you know, being able to make those groupings allows us to apply logic like that logic that uh, makes sense to your particular organization so uh, I hope at some point something like that is implemented because that would make this thing uh, even better but even as it is it is well worth the, the time getting it set up and and taking a look at it and uh, as you can see just scroll through quickly these are the filters that are available to you. Let's see if we have any SSH traffic. And we got none. Too bad. Um, but yeah, as you see, awesome, 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 awesome data here. So uh, check it out and uh, let me know what you think. Um, as always, you can reach me on the, the normal um, Twitter, YouTube, email, which I'll, I'll throw a, a box up on the video so you can have all those uh, that data as well. Uh, be sure to listen to the uh, Secure Bit guys and uh, follow them on um, Twitter and, and uh, uh, as well. And uh, you know, thanks, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the show, and I'll talk to you guys next time.